wrote, I sort of think most most famously, the book Sweet Bitter, which was then turned into, it was a bestseller for, sorry to make you do this, but for how long? <laughs> <laughs> for a long time, it was on the, the bestsellers list. It, it had list. a nice run. It had a nice run. You then published your memoir, Stray, and now you're working on your third book, a novel entitled Smog. Mm. Is that is that the scoop? Did I just has that ever been said publicly before? It hasn't been said. It's okay. been printed. OK, but, you know, great. I'm ready for you to announce it. I'm breaking the news. If you are a 22 year old girl who doesn't know your mind yet, what's that experience in in my experience? It's being told who you are by a bunch of people, mm. being told who you are by older women, by a bartender that you're obsessed with, by the sweet guy who really wants to date you. Because of you're so, you're, you're, you're building a, an identity off of the way you're perceived. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's true for a lot of, I mean, I think all young women. <laughs> I mean, I can only speak to what it felt like mm -hmm. when you're, and you're on display constantly and so you have the customers and it can be everything from people saying you look french are you french like mm. um to your boss saying i really think that you're developing quite nicely and Oof, like God. but both of those things are the same kind of objectification yeah um, and you sort of lean into the objectification a little bit because you're performing and your livelihood depends on that performance, right? I mean, can we talk about how fucked up tips are? Mm. Like as a young woman, you think about the like the pressure of likability and the cult of likability, but you take it into a restaurant setting and it's true of men and women, your literal livelihood depends on how flirtatious, likable, what kind of line you towed with mm. your customer. It's a fucking trip. You did not have a safe childhood. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, definitely. A lot of chaos, um, a lot of instability. My parents are addicts and were active addicts um, in my youth. And it was um, very wild. Yeah, it's very wild. And um, I think that that also speaks to why you were so determined and to use your word careerist when it came mm -hmm. to writing because you knew you had a skill and you knew if you honed that skill, you could guarantee a certain amount of safety in your life that you hadn't had before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that not having a safety net is one of the graces of my life. Mm -hmm. As much as I struggle with it now that I'm a mother, wanting to give my children a feeling of safety in the world, my lack of it, I mean, that's why I'm not a drug addict. I think even how you're putting that is being too hard on yourself. Oh my God. Sorry. This is what she does after two martinis and now she's doing it here. She's like, listen to me. It's true. I do. I mean, just you even saying like, oh, for people to recognize that I am such a monster. It's like, bitch, shut up. You're not, you're not a monster. You definitely, I mean, the, the thing that is important about writing and storytelling is that you are capturing reality as much as you can, which means capturing the subjectivity of reality, which means examining yourself and your perspective mm -hmm. so that you can be clear about the lens that you're viewing the world through and your experiences through. Right. right? And that in itself is an attempt at objectivity, mm -hmm. right? To admit the subjectivity yes. and try to look at that also from the outside. Mm -hmm.